But a quick update on the swales here. Um, just showing you there's a little bit of ice left on the ground. We were blanketed by about four inches of ice for over a week. And uh, we just finally got into some really warm weather in the last two days. The swales were full of ice and the swale mounds were covered with ice. And uh, this melt, look at the harvest. Looks just like the last video I showed you that was from a bunch of rain. Um, when I walk along this now, especially in the inner swales on the other side of that berm, you can just feel the, the land completely hydrated. But just, again, so, while all, all the other properties around here, and this water will soak more than it typically would, but while all the other properties around here have uh, this water just, just, you know, 86 in their area, we've got it just holding. Just holding absolutely beautifully. That's not flowing there, that's wind. Now what's interesting is this little trickle of water here. That's not actually coming out of that swale. That's roof melt that's hitting the ground because we don't have that tank installed yet. And for right now, it's just wandering right down that path. Now, that's something that tells me that right there would be a good place to put in like maybe a stone path or something. It's a nice pathway. It's a place we designed to be left open. And it makes a nice diversion drain for excess water. Yesterday, when I opened the door, the dogs didn't want to come out because the melt was so heavy. Here's the top swale. The melt was so heavy. There's my little garden swales. And they're all full. Even the top one way up there by the building. But the dog didn't want to go out. Because he was flat convinced that it was a bad idea to go out because he thought it was pouring rain. And all it was was the roof melt with the top swell. Again, when these swells are full, like in my last update, we're holding over 20,000 gallons of water. Now, they're not full right now, but they were yesterday. They're already starting to weep in. My only fear with this ice storm we had, we may have lost our cover crop. And we may not have much of an opportunity to get much in there at this point. Because we have, uh, well it's going to be 57 tomorrow. It's going to be nice all next week. But by Monday of next week we're supposed to be back down into the teens again. And it's just too much. It would have been much better to get this system in a little earlier. But we'll work with it. If nothing else we'll just triple, quadruple the mulch on there and uh, hit it with seed and it'll come up when nature decides it's time uh, on the melt we have not yet seen a weepage over the sills we got right up to the top yesterday and uh, the main melt came yesterday they went from just a little bit of water in the bottom of them to full in a few hours uh, and then they've kind of maintained a stasis right here coming down this way I actually came out here to count the live oaks for a write-up that I'm working on for this project. You can read that write-up anytime. Look up my profile at Permaculture Global. Um, I have it in a PDF. That's that, that second swell again. It doesn't end there. It goes all the way around. Let's go take a look at the bottom swell. The bottom swell is actually the least full. And Joe is struggling with why. And the reason is, you see out there, that driveway, all that catchment feeds into the swell. You can read the catchment numbers. Um, right now, most of the roof actually ends up in the middle swale, not the top swale. The top swale has a huge catchment above it. The lower swale only has a relatively small catchment. So it's basically catching only the water that hits this inner swale. There's no hard runoff in there. Or, if that sill overflows, it catches it. So, for the time being, it's the lowest swale when we have an event like this. But as you can see, it's not a hardship. It's, it's quite it's doing quite a good job of harvesting this water, rehydrating this soil. That's what four inches of ice does to the swale. Love the contour in that swale. So there you go. Uh, again, keep an eye on the write-up on this property at Permaculture Global. And... Uh, Again, there's, there's why that mid-swale is so full. 
we've got that design so all the way out to that my truck my f-350 way out there in the distance in the dead center of the screen right now all the way back around to that gate a hundred percent of that's all packed heavy hard runoff comes down into that mid swale and uh, you see the house in the background about half of the water from that roof ends up in this swale the other half breaks off to the other side of the property we're on the edge of a saddle here and that's why it's so full anyway uh, and there's a tree that was planted by the last homeowner. We're not even sure what kind of tree it is, but uh, we might just leave it there and see how much better it does now that this system is uh, going to be built up around it. Anyway, again, check out the full write-up on this project at Permaculture Global. I'll put a link to my profile in the project in the video notes.